So last week we spoke about the the introductions of talaq and you know what the Quran and Sunnah say about it and how the Sharia has um, made efforts and put in uh, put in measures to try and ensure that talaq doesn't take place and if it needs to be a case or if it is a case where there is no other way out of the situation apart for with talaq, apart for by talaq, then there is of course the opportunity of talaq is there, but that only comes as a last resort. And the hadith that we read last time also, we remember that the Prophet has taught us that the most disliked halal action in the sight of Allah is talaq. So there are things which Allah has made halal, and yet it's not just because it's halal it does not mean that you go out there and you actively try and do those things of them is talaq so talaq is halal yes of course because someone may be in a situation where they have to go for that uh, option but it's the most disliked uh, action from all of the halal actions that allah Azza wa Jal has permitted also we've, we've we've we know the hadith also from before the story uh, and the hadith of when iblis gathers all of his um, you know, all of his soldiers, if you like, or all of those, all of his minions, or all of those he controls, his, his, his uh, little shayateen, and he um, asks them on a daily basis, what action, what sin have you facilitated, or have you encouraged, what sin have you com- have, got, have got people to commit in the dunya, and they all say different, different lists of things, and then one shaytan, a small one, comes and says, no, I have... I've just um, I've just been able to separate a husband and a wife, and he gets the most congratulations and says, "Yeah, you're unto ant, you're the one that has done a huge task." So um, all of this goes to show us that talaq is not something that we uh, that's taken lightly, nor is it an easy step that a person takes. Um, uh, and we, we we highlighted five main points um, before we even started talking about all of this, and those were those. I'll just quickly remind you that. In the fact that Allah has facilitated and legislated talaq, in it we see that Allah knows us. In it we see Allah's wisdom, Allah's ilm, and Allah's the fact that it's latif and it's khabir, He knows everything. Because there may be a situation where talaq is actually a mercy for some people, because that is the only way of avoiding and getting out of that situation. So in it we see that Allah, it's an evidence that Allah knows us, because not every couple get along and there may be that situation that arises um, number two there can't be a plan for talaq from the beginning it has to be something that because of a situation it arises but if someone's planning to give somebody talaq and gets married with that intention then that nikah in the first place is not valid and so therefore having that intention of talaq while getting married that i am just getting married to give talaq in a few months or a few weeks that's completely haram and that's not allowed number three um, it should be a last resort, as we've said before. Number four, there should be a. There sh- as for when there is talaq that occurs because of whatever reason, because of difficulty, and all of the situations that may arise, there shouldn't be a stigma or a hatred attached to it or a negative feeling attached to those who are involved in that talaq. So we have in some cultures. In, in many, in, even in our culture, we have if somebody is divorcee, then they're seen as someone lower, someone that's done something wrong, someone that's sinful, or someone that's basically a, a problem or something like that. It's not always the case. A lot of the times, it doesn't work out because of a reason. It doesn't mean that there's anything that they are bad people. <coughs> there was, in fact, even talaq at the time of the Sahaba. Can we say they were bad people? No, of course not. And so there should be, there shouldn't be any stigma attached to it. Number five. The entire community, all of us should try to facilitate and help people to try and avoid talaq. And so just like the imam has to try and advise and counsel and sit with people to try and, you know, safeguard communities from talaq. Also, the family should also facilitate. If they, for example, see that the couple are going through a hard time on it anyway, or that, you know, the pressure that's coming from the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, the relatives or the sister or the brother or the friends is having an impact on the couple and their relationship, then they should all step back and they should take measures to try and make their marriage successful instead of uh, being selfish or being childish or being negative about it and sort of discouraging uh, discouraging they should in fact facilitate and encourage that their marriage continues and they should try to avoid talaq as a community at large today i wanted to say we'll speak about i said that we'll speak about the types and the categories of talaq so talaq has got different categories and this categorization is based 
uh, on different uh, variables. So first of all, we'll talk about um, talaq has got three categories based on the effect and the impact it has. So when the talaq is given, what impact does it have on the marriage contract? Based on that perspective, there are three types. So I'll say that again. Based on the impact the talaq has on the marriage contract, to what extent does it damage it? To what extent does it break it? To what extent does it disrupt it? Okay. Based on that, there are three categories of talaq. The first is called al talaq al raj'i, the the revocable, the retractable, the reversible talaq, the talaq that you can reverse, and that talaq is only one. That talaq is only one uh, pronunciation that I divorce you, or one expression, whether it be in verbal or in writing or in text message or whatever. If someone expresses, if the not if someone, in fact, if the husband tells his wife. I divorce you once. Now I've said to you very, at the very beginning from last week that this is we'll cover in order. But there is, of course, the, the the possibility and the opportunity for demanding a separation of marriage is in the hands of both partners, because sometimes some people would might, would like to imagine and try, make the assumption and make the accusation that you know Islam is unfair and gives only the right of divorce to the man and nothing to the woman. This is completely incorrect and it's wrong. In fact women have stated and mentioned grounds upon which they can actually seek out a talaq seek out and enforce a divorce if there if there is if there are these circumstances that come up um, generally speaking though it is yes it is maybe easier it is easier in terms of effort for the man to give the talaq it's not easier in all of its senses but it's easier in terms of effort how much effort does it take for a man to give a talaq it's quite easy and that is, had it been for also our sisters, for the women, then it's not necessarily the case that it would have been a good thing. Because easily giving talaq, if someone is emotional, if someone is, uh, you know, for example, uh, different variables that have an impact on our emotional stability and stuff like that. You know, this is the reason why it, the man and the husband has been given that responsibility is because the man is supposed to be a rajul. A rajul in Arabic is different from dhakar. Dhakar means male and rajul means man. There's a difference between a male and a man. A man is someone who's responsible, who thinks before he acts, who plans, who is calculating. And so that responsibility and that ability to give talaq, yes, easily, is because you're supposed to be more responsible. So that's why uh, talaq, yes, the man can issue, the husband can issue, but also the wife can demand and can acquire a separation if she wants to and if she goes through that process. So we're covering in order. First is talaq raj'i, and that's how the fuqaha and the books of fiqh have covered it. First is, the first categorization is based upon the impact the talaq will have upon the contract. There are three types in this category. First is raj'i, it's called revocable retractable, reversible. This is first. Why is it first? Because it's the lightest form of talaq. So how, how does it work? It's when the man says to his wife that, you know, I divorce you once. And if he says that and just once, okay, then because he's just said it once or written it once or pronounced it once or indicated that it's only once, he can revoke that. He can basically just um, they can come to a term. They, they can come to. They can come to an agreement and just carry on life as it were. So, how does that work? If he gives a talaq, and within the idda period, what's the idda period? Idda will come to that in a bit more detail later on. Today, I just want to talk about categorizations a bit. Idda is a waiting period, and this waiting period differs depending on what kind of talaq or what kind of separation occurred. I'll say that again. Idda is a waiting period that a woman. A divorcee woman needs to wait before being able to remarry and the number of months and the amount of time she has to wait differs based upon how the marriage ended if the marriage ended because of divorce then it's X amount of time if the marriage ended because of death because the husband passed away then it's X amount of time if the marriage ended either by death or divorce but she's pregnant 
which is expecting a child, then it's X amount of time. So there are different amounts of times depending on how and when the marriage ends. Nonetheless, the point is the revocable, the reversible, the retractable talaq, the talaq raj'i, and raj'a yarj'u in Arabic means to return, you can return it, okay, is it means that the talaq can be cancelled out, i.e. you can continue your marital life as long as, as long as you continue your marital life within this waiting period. What is the waiting period? Waiting period is three months. Three months, namely the three period cycles of the three months. The three period cycles of the three months. And that's the Hanafi school of law opinion. In the Shafi'i school of law, they count the purity or the pure days of the month. That's ikhtilaf, known Quru. What does it mean? It's a big, big ikhtilaf. Point being is that, so now I'll give you a scenario to make it more clear. If someone says to his wife, right, in January, says, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't want to carry on in marriage with you, I, I divorce you once, for example, he says that. Then um, they are technically still married. They're not divorced, their marriage hasn't ended yet. They are technically still married. One because, one of the, why are they still married? One because there's still two divorces left, number one. Also because the idda hasn't ended yet. Because of both of these reasons, they are technically still married. Because he only gave one divorce and the idda hasn't ended yet, idda i.e. the waiting period for the, for the sister, for the woman, right, for the, for the wife, they are technically still connected via marriage contract. Because they are still technically connected via marriage contract, for them to resume their marital life is as simple as getting back together. Uh, for example, they, they say, oh, let's carry on. And that's as simple as that. There's no need to go and remarry again. None of that. When is that? When it's one talaq, talaq raj'i. One talaq, talaq raj'i. And as long as this returning, this reversing takes place within the idda period. If the idda period finishes, what's the idda period? The three months. The three impure, as in, I, three, the, the three menstrual cycles. Three, if three months go by, and then now he says, I would like to continue in marital life with you, or he wants to, he indicates it, he expresses that he wants to carry on with his li life with his wife, then it's not as simple anymore. After the idda has ended, this talaq is not, is not raj'i anymore, it becomes ba'in. Ba'in, ba'na yabinu means it becomes clear. Ba'na yabinu means, bayani means it becomes clear. The talaq has become quite clear. And so now, if he wants to continue marital life with his wife, he has to give her a new contract. He has to give her a new mahar. He has to give her a new mahar and they have to pronounce their marital commitments once again. I accept you as my wife, I accept you as my husband, this is the new mahar. Why is that? Sharia, why has it done that? Why has Sharia done that? Is to say that you have divorced her first of all and now you want to carry on and on top of that you've waited a very long time so now for you to re recommit you have to express your commitment once again through nikah so the first type of talaq is called talaq raj'i why is it first? because it's the lightest form of talaq it's the sort of you know it's the least effective or it's the easiest to get out of talaq because it's only one talaq and if it's one talaq, then you can easily return your wife to you. You can carry on with marital life. Just by expression, just by saying, or just by getting together again, in the same house, whatever, or spending the night together. All of this is an indication that you're happy to carry on with marital life once again. <coughs> However, if the idda, the three months waiting period finishes, now it's become ba'in. Now you have to do a new contract. That's one scenario. If the waiting period finishes, then you have to do a new contract, new contract. Also, another situation where you'd have to do a new contract is if he gives two talaqs. If he gives two talaqs, if he gives one talaq, then yes, it's raj'i. You can return it as long as it's within, done, done within, the, within the three months. If he gives two talaqs, then this is called ba'in as well. If he gives two talaqs, then even if, if it's within the three months, he has to do a new contract. 
So what we're looking at, I'm going to take it step by step very slowly because talaq is very, very misunderstood. A lot of people don't know what they're doing when they give talaq and they have lots of confusions and then they come to the masab and the mulvi and the shaykh when it's all done. When the three talaqs are finished and the waiting period is finished and they're like, oh shaykh, can you save us now? It's too late now. You've already done what you needed to do. You should have come to the shaykh before and find out how, how talaq works. And that's why I say again and again that when it comes to marriage, it's the most precious gift it's the most precious gift. Marriage is the most precious gift from Allah because Allah gives you, you know, your spouse as a, as, a, as a present, as a gift to you. And yet this precious gift of ours, we, we, ha we, ha we make no effort to, try effort to try and study how it works. If you buy a car, if you buy a house, you work so hard, you prepare, you learn, you study, you do research before you do any of these, acquire any of these special gifts and, uh, you know, things in life. But when it comes to marriage, we we'll just walk in to marriage and walk out like it's... Uh, I don't know, like carelessly, effortlessly. This is not right. So we're talking about <coughs> talaq. We are understanding it. We're categorizing it based upon the impact it has on the contract. The first is raj'i. Raj'i is when? Raj'i, what does it mean first of all? Say, let's, let's think together. Raj'i means reversible, retractable, revocable. You can cancel it. When does it occur? When only one talaq is given. And the idda period has not yet ended. Two things. Only one talaq is given and the idda period has not yet ended. That's called talaq raj'i. Next category, number two, is called talaq ba'in. Raj'i means revocable. Ba'in means clear, established. When something is clear, it's established. Talaq ba'in means clear. When does ba'in occur? Ba'in means clear. When does it occur? It occurs when after giving one talaq you've let the three months go by or you've given two talaqs in one go not three two ba'in so this is number two ba'in but within ba'in there's ba'in sughra and ba'in kubra so number two is called ba'in bainuna sughra it's a bit of a long name ba'in bainuna sughra ba'in sughra we'll say for short so number two category of talaq in this categorization is ba'in bainuna sughra. What does it mean? It means that the waiting period has gone by and the reversing or the revoking has not happened or that two talaqs were given in one go. How do you resolve ba'in bainuna sughra? Can you resolve ba'in bainuna sughra? How do you resolve ba'in bainuna sughra? Can you resolve ba'in bainuna sughra? Yes, you can with a new contract with a new nikah basically. There are also, so this is when ba'in occurs, okay? One is that the period has gone by. Two is that two talaqs were given in one go. Three is that the man divorced his wife even before, uh, um, before consummating the marriage, okay? And also there is one more scenario when the talaq is done via khula, via sharia court, then it becomes ba'in as well. But the, the, the other ones, they're a bit more compli complicated, so I'll, I'll skip those for now. I'm trying to categorize so it's clear in your mind. Number two, ba'in bainuna sughra. What does it mean? It means either two talaqs have been given or the waiting period was finished and it was not reversed. How do you fix it? You fix it by a new contract, new act nikah. Category number three is Ba'in Bainuna Kubra. Ba'in Bainuna Kubra. Talaq Ba'in Bainuna Kubra. So we'll call it Ba'in Kubra. Sughra means small in Arabic and Kubra means big. So small talaq and big talaq. First one is revocable, reversible talaq. Second one is small talaq. And the th uh, 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 that's the second one. And the third one is big talaq. After big talaq, there's no going back. It's finished. That's the end of the line. So what does that mean? So now we come to what's ba'in bainuna kubra. What's ba'in bainuna kubra? Ba'in bainuna kubra means that it's very clear. It's a big talaq. It's finished. That's the end of it. When does it occur? It occurs when three talaqs have been issued. When three talaqs have been issued, it's finished. Can you rescue it? You can't. There's no saving of that contract. 
When there was three talaqs given, you can't rescue that talaq anymore. That's the end of the line. In Arabic, we call it al yes. To, to give talaq with three talaqat. Or, you know, bainuna kubra as well is, is, is the technical fiqhi name that they give it. Okay, so now that is the first categorization. Let's, we've understood that, right? We're looking at talaq from different angles. First angle, talaq, what impact does it have on the contract? That's the first perspective. So imagine you're looking at talaq through about four different windows. When understand talaq, we've got four different windows to understand talaq. First window we look at, it says, based on the impact it has on the contract. And it's got one, two, and three. One, raj'i. What's raj'i? What does it mean? Reversible. How does it occur? One talaq given. How do you reverse it? By expressing it simply. I want to carry on with marriage with you. As long as it's done within the waiting period. Three months waiting period. Number two. Ba'in bainuna sughra. What, is, what does it mean in Arabic? It means that it's a clear talaq. How does it occur? By two talaqs? Or by letting the waiting period finish. <coughs> How do you solve it? By doing a new contract. New nikah. Third category. Ba'in bainuna kubra. What does it mean in Arabic? It means the big talaq. The big one. Nothing to, nothing to smile about, nothing to laugh about, it's a big issue. Big talaq. How does it occur? By giving three talaqs. How do you reverse it? You can't. It's finished. It's the end of the line. Does that, does that make sense, yeah? It makes very, try to make it, make it as clear as possible without using diagrams. Inshallah, we should use diagrams to be honest. And the whole charts. But I think, I, my understanding is if you understand it, if you can draw the diagram in your mind, it's better than me drawing the diagram for you on the, on the board. Okay, so I've tried to draw the diagram for you. <coughs> now, we're going to come back to all of this again. Because we need to understand what kind of impact does raj'i have on the marriage? What's, there's more to discuss. For example, in a raj'i talaq, what if one of the spouses die in that middle of that time? What kind of impact does it have? Right? Um, does the man still have to carry on providing for the woman when he's a reversible talaq? Does he still have to, like, if she, if she needs to buy new clothes? Does she, does she still have to? Yes, he does. If she needs food, she has to still give as well. So all of this is coming to be continued, if you like. Now we're going to look at talaq from the other window. Okay, we said that imagine we're looking at talaq from four different windows. First window, based on the impact it has on the marriage contract. Come to the next window. Next window, okay? What does the next window title say? The next window title says... Hold on, coming to it. I'm, I'm skipping, I'm trying to just draw the image for you first. The next window says, categorization of talaq based on what time of the month is issued. What time of the month, literally it means that. What time of the month it was issued. First one is categorizations of talaq based on the impact it has on the marriage contract. Raj'i, bayinuna sughra and bayinuna kubra. Next window says, Categorization of talaq based on what time of the month it was issued. What does that mean? There's only two categories here, so it's very easy. It's very, very easy. Number one, talaq sunni. Sunni. Not ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, i.e. based on sunnah. Actually, it's similar in that regard. Talaq sunni. Based on sunnah, i.e. The, the sunnah method that if somebody wants to give talaq, then this is the way you should do it. And not doing it like this would mean that it's bid'i. Doing it different from this means you're, you're basically doing bid'ah. <laughs> you're doing it against the sunnah. Okay? Bid, uh, the bid'ah word is, is, a, is a very difficult word because it's easily misunderstood. Yeah, big, bid'ah is a... What do you say, Shachu? It's a big issue, right? Uh, so when you say bid'ah, uh, too many things come up. So you have to... You, when you say bid'ah, we have to, you know, caveats and explanations. What do you mean by bid'i? You know? Anyways, so we're this window number two. We're looking at talaq from the lens, from the window, based on what time of the month is issued. It can be Sunni. What does Sunni mean? Okay. 
Sunni has got four conditions. Sunni has got four conditions. First of all, first of all, the talaq should be issued if it is to be issued. We're not saying talaq should be issued. So don't just if someone if someone was to try and take that kibah, the talaq should be issued. Oh, that I said it should be issued. If the talaq is to be issued, it should be issued. Okay, during the not not during the menstrual cycle days, not during the hayat, not when she's going through her period, when she's in her pure days, when she's not in her period. So generally, period days are seven days, could be less, could be ten days. So in the other part of the month, that's when that's condition number one. Condition number two is to give only one talaq at a time. So if someone gives two talaqs in one go, that's also bid'i. So one, the condition number one, to give it in the tuhur period, not in the menstrual cycle period. <coughs> okay. Number two is to give only one at a time and not two. Because th- do you see how this is? This is not about emotions. Talaq is not about emotions. It's planned, it's calculated. Sharia is saying, if you want to do it the right way, mate, you've got, you got to be very sure what you're doing. You've got to give one talaq per month during the period when she's not on her menstrual cycle. And there's so much hikmah too, we could go into it. Why that? Why this? But, you know, we'll try to keep it a bit short. So it goes to show that Sharia is telling us that even if you want to give talaq, take your time. Think about it. Is this really what you want? <coughs> but unfortunately, most people, most men, they use talaq as a weapon. Maybe not in this country, I don't know. But in other countries, especially in like uh, our cultures, I've seen Arabic culture as well. I've seen it. You know, this like, you know, if you do this, I promise I'm going to give you a divorce. It's like a weaponized talaq. It's like, it's always loaded, locked and loaded. Anytime you do something wrong, it's good to go. It's not, it's, that's not how it works. That's not, that's not the Sunni talaq. Okay? So first condition, it should be in the pure time. Number two is that it should be only one at a time. Condition number three is that pure time that you're talking about, the pure time, you know, in the period of time, that pure time you're talking about, that pure time has to be the pure time, a pure time in which there has been no intercourse. Otherwise, that's also be day. So there are some conditions. You okay, young man? How old are you? Is he okay for this? It's fine, alhamdulillah. He's an intelligent man, alhamdulillah. Okay, so do you understand? So these are some of the conditions. Arba ashrut, what are they? She has to be in the tour period i.e. she's not in menstrual cycle, she's not in her postnatal bleeding, um, that there's been uh, no consummation of marriage in that time, in that pure, uh, pure time, and to give her only one talaq, and to not give a second. These are the four conditions. Let me say the four conditions again. That she's not in her period, or her, men- or her, menstru- period, I. her menstrual cycles, or her postnatal bleeding, i.e. she's in her pure, pure time. That pure time is not, there has been no... Uh, consummation in that pure time in that pure 20 days or whatever 15 days that there is here okay to only give one and not to follow up with the second this is the sunnah way of giving talaq the sunni talaq the opposite of that is bid'i if you oppose any of those conditions previous that we've mentioned is bid'i i.e. if you give the talaq if someone gives the talaq if the man gives the talaq when she's in her period then it's bid'i if he gives more than one talaq together, then it's bid'i. If he, um, if he gives the talaq during a pure time where he's consummated the marriage, okay, then that's also bid'i. Anything that's against Sunni is bid'i. What does bid'i mean then? Sunni means that if you, do, do, if you have to give talaq, then this is the right way to give it. And if you do it in this way, with the right intention, that I'm trying to follow the command of the Prophet Sallallahu you get a reward for it. And bid'i means the opposite, that if you do it in the bid'i way, i.e. against the Sunni way, then you'll get sins. You'll be sinful. Okay, bid'i means you'll be sinful. But, there is a big but. You will be sinful but, B-U-T, big but. You will be sinful for giving talaq in this way, but the talaq will be done. Does that make sense? You will be sinful for giving talaq in this way, but the talaq will be done. It will be issued. Like I gave the example last week. It's like, for example, Shaju by goes and uh, proposes to a beautiful sister. Okay? 
and the family is thinking about it and then some other dude comes and proposes to the same lady sorry I don't mean to jinx your future propositions 